Well, hey, Church Intention listeners, thanks so much uh, for joining us again, whether you're listening to this on a pod- podcast platform or maybe you're joining us on YouTube watching this on video. We're so excited and honored that you would join us for this special episode. Today, we have a couple of great guests, but before I introduce them to you, I want to encourage you to go to our website, churchintention.com, uh, check out articles, check out resources we have for you. We also encourage you to uh, share this podcast on your social media platforms, tell your friends about it tell the world about it. Give us a rating. Give us uh, five stars. Say a couple of great things about the podcast. It helps us spread the word. And we pray that this uh, this podcast is a, is a blessing to you. Today, I have two guests with me, um, two, the, two guests that have been in the ministry. This isn't, a, this isn't a slam, guys. This is a compliment. They've been in the ministry probably longer than I've been alive. 42 years? Am I, I mean, what are we talking here? So my guests are uh, Tom Lane and Wayne Drain. Okay, so before I jump into this, let me just kind of introduce them to you. So Wayne Drain, if you don't know who Wayne Drain is, Wayne Drain is the founding pastor, uh, founding pastor, senior pastor of City Church, formerly known as Fellowship of Christ- uh, of Christians in Russellville, Arkansas. Uh, his call is to pastor and to prophesy to the nations, and he has ministered in 48 states, 39 nations, a local pastor, here it is, 45 plus years. Now this may be an old bio. Is this, is this an old bio Wayne? Yeah. <laughs> so how many years is it now? Well, I actually pastored the church for 45 years and then I turned it off to a, a young guy. So I've not been pastoring gotcha. the last few years. Yeah. That was in 2017. So. Wow. So, so over 45 years, Wayne has also ministered nationally, internationally speaking, worship leading, consulting, participating in, in prophetic uh, presbyteries. Tom Lane uh, is an apostolic senior pastor at Gateway Church. Um, Prior to his current position, he served at Gateway Church as executive senior pastor for 12 years, and he was a campus pastor for two years. Tom uh, served before that at Trinity Church in Amarillo. Tom has experience in a variety of church leadership roles, including business administration, administrative pastor, executive pastor, and senior pastor. And before we go any further, Tom, we might as well say your newest role, the newest thing that Tom is stepping into. So before I do that, let me just say, guys, welcome to the podcast. I'm I'm really excited Thank to you. have both of you on. It's an honor. Thank you. Thank you, John. So before we jump into the content, Tom, let's talk about your new role. So Tom is kind of stepping into a new season. Uh, so Tom, why don't you tell us about that? We are launching the Tom Lane Executive uh, Leadership Institute at Gateway. Yeah. <clears throat> and, uh, the, the goal, the purpose of what we're doing is to try and um, help develop a new generation of executive leaders mm-hmm. in the body of Christ. And, and that's, <clears throat> the focus is church leaders, but in addition to that, it, it uh, applies to uh, business leaders as well. Yeah. We're leaders that have a heart for God and God is placed in an area of ministry service. And we're, we're going to do our best to in part, what we've experienced and what we've learned over these yeah. forty years of ministry, uh, in a in a way that <clears throat> helps them become effective yeah. in their seasons ahead. It's really great, and I'm excited for you. But I'm I'm also excited about just the the pastors who will who will learn from your experience and, and glean from that. So you guys have written a couple of books together, and really the topic of this podcast, depending on where we take it, but really where we're going to start anyways, is in prophetic ministry. Uh, both of you carry this this gift of, of prophetic ministry um, in your ministry, but also you've written books about it. You're, you're hosting and, and, um, and doing presbyteries uh, all over the country. So why don't we start with, I, I want to, there's a lot of places I want to go. I have a, a lot of notes here, but I really want to just start by when did you guys start realizing, Wayne, maybe you go first. When did you start realizing that you had a prophetic gift? Was it as a child? Like when did you begin to realize that? And when did it really start to come out in you? Well, I knew something was going on when I was about eight or nine years old. And my mother was very prophetic, as was my grandmother. Hmm. And so I was in a context where that wasn't a weird thing for me, but I started to just know some things and I'd talk to my mom about it. And, you know, so I had that context with her. And then later on, I traveled with a man named Laddie McDonough, who was in the Latter Rain movement, who became a mentor to me. And I led worship for him and he and he discipled me in the prophetic for about three years. Wow. And um uh, 
and so it's 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 unfolded although i've known there was, i had something in there when I, when i was back in grade school yeah and you know, sometimes i would just know stuff wow and i didn't know what to do with it didn't know where it's coming from but wow. uh but i i love i love jesus since i was 5 years old so i've always uh, i've always known mm. it's about him that's great what about you, Tom? Did when did you start sensing that? Did it come later in life, or was it early on? Well, um, it was later in life. It was into my maybe early thirties. Hmm. Um, I got saved at sixteen, but I'd come out of a Presbyterian background, and so I was more in my head than I was in my heart. Hmm. Uh, you know, when I when I thought about spiritual gifts, <clears throat> I I had to understand them. So I I would look at the gifts of the spirit. And I'd say, well, I, I, I know wisdom and knowledge and healings and, but I, I don't know about this prophecy stuff. <laughs> I mean, it seems a little more subjective than it is objective. Mm -hmm. And um, actually I was, um, I started to develop a hunger when we, we were in a spirit filled church and um, back in the seventies, the, the, pattern was <clears throat> you would worship until sort of the Lord's presence uh, settled in. Mm -hmm. And then there would be a, a hush that settled over the congregation. Somebody would have a tongue, an interpretation, or a, a prophetic, um, you know, word. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, for me, I always thought that was really cool, but sort of the way it settled out was there was always one or two of the same people that are, were always the perfect people, <laughs> yeah, know, were yeah. always the, and as the church grew, the bigger the church grew, the more we felt like we need to know the people that are sort of ministering among us. Yeah. <clears throat> and we did. Yeah. And then, you know, if you, if you have a public word and it's not a good word, then you have to have a public correction. <laughs> and they, That didn't work too well. Huh. And so, um, you know, that, I, I was trying to figure out how do you make this all work mm -hmm. in a personal context, but in the in inside the church and so on. Yeah, I was introduced to to uh, Robert Morris, mm -hmm. who was doing prophetic presbyteries. Mm. Uh, I I think Robert learned them from Wayne, mm. <laughs> or Wayne was doing them before Robert was. So Wayne kind of drew Robert in. Well, dr Robert drew me in. Interesting. He said, "Hey, you know what you got to do is you got to do." Presbytery, and I said, "What? No, what?" He said, "Yeah, come, come on, just you know, come see how, see how it's done." Yeah, that was my introduction into wow. my history and introduction into prophetic ministry. I really want to get into the presbyteries because I think for those that don't know what that is, it's a really great, a really great way to to lead their church uh, towards more prophetic ministry. And I'll I'll pause for just a second and kind of give a even a personal story. So. I grew up, you know, in a very spirit-filled church, um, and when I began to pastor larger churches, it, it, I had a hunger and a thirst for that those kind of movements to happen. But I'm like you, Tom, when you get thousands of people in a room, it becomes very difficult, you know, and you don't have to have thousands of people in the room. It can be difficult with 100 people in the room or 50 people in the room. So I came to you, I don't know if you remember this, Tom, it was a couple of years ago, I came to you because I had started getting the conviction as a pastor, because I believe in the gifts and fruit of the, of the Spirit, but I didn't see them manifesting in my church or even in my leadership. And so I had came across Ephesians in Ephesians 2, where it's, it's kind of talking about the church, and it says that it's built on the foundation of the apostle and the prophet as the, as the foundation with Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. And it just, it really stuck out to me. Okay. Hopefully every church has the cornerstone of Jesus. I mean, that's kind of, most churches get that right. At least I hope they do. And I think most churches, and it was the story for my, my church, I carry more of an apostolic gift. And what I've realized that most of my leadership carried more of an apostolic gift. I didn't have hardly any, if any prophetic, really, really strong prophetic gifted people on my staff. And I didn't see it being cultivated in the congregation. And there certainly was an avenue, there wasn't an avenue for that. So I came to you and began to talk to you about that. And that's when I knew about presbytery, but I was like, that's when you said you, your church needs to do a presbytery. And so we ended up doing it in November 
And um, I, I want to here in a minute, I'm Wayne, I'm going to have you kind of unpack presbytery for our listeners to for a listener that has no idea what we're even talking about. But I can say that it was it transformed my church. It transformed. Um, it introduced people. We saw testimony after testimony. There was one particular lady who came to the presbytery who um, grew up like I think it was Seventh Day Adventist or something, and she had been coming to our church for a couple of weeks, and we said presbytery, and she said, honestly, I just came to see how weird it was going to be, and she ended up getting healed from a crazy back injury she had, um, getting filled with the Holy Spirit, just having a, a radical encounter with the Lord. So let me pause there, Wayne. Will you just unpack what presbytery is? What is presbytery? Well, most people, when they hear presbytery, they think it's it's leaders of the Presbyterian Church. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but a, yeah. a prophetic presbytery is just a prophetic gathering with mm. some specific focus, and the focus is on is on worship, it's on prayer, yeah. but it's but it's on uh, prophesying over leaders and potential leaders mm-hmm. to help them see themselves as God sees them, and not just through their own uh, desires or their own. Um, their own hopes. Yeah. So a presbytery is uh, is when the, the local pastors ask some outside ministers who have prophetic gifts to come in, and they will come in and, and uh, before they get there, the local pastors will will identify what we call candidates. Mm-hmm. Nothing political about it. Mm-hmm. We identify what we call candidates, and that was folks that they want to go sit under the prophets and to hear what might be spoken over them mm-hmm. and. And uh, the difference in a presbytery and a word in season, they're all about um, edification, exhortation, and comfort. But in words in season, it's more about that. But in a prophetic presbytery, we're pressing in for gifts. Yeah. We're pressing in for callings. Yep. And, and we move in the ministry of impartation. So say if you're sitting in a presbytery, which you've seen, um, those that are candidates have already prepared themselves. They've been fasting and praying. They have the assurance that the local pastors feel like this is, that they're not only to be the candidate, but it's the right timing for them. So they come and they all, if it's the first time, they're all like deer in the headlights, mm-hmm. you know, and so we realize that. So yep. we just try to calm it down a little bit. And, and we always promise up front, usually Tom says, we promise this will be a weird free zone. And that's yes. what we try to do. Yes. And both being pastors, we know what it is to have renegade prophetic ministries yep. Yep. blow in and blow it up and then blow, blow out. out. And yep. we have to clean it up. So, yep. so but what our, our hope for presbyteries is that people would not only feel maybe a call to ministry internally, mm-hmm. But it could be affirmed or confirmed by the the prophets giving that word. And maybe you kind of have a, you sort of feel maybe I'm apostolic, maybe I'm a pastor, maybe I'm evangelist, and you're trying to figure it out. But when someone that doesn't know you at all and hasn't been given any information, then when they come in and say, I see an evangelistic gift in you, it's, it, I've seen it as there's a, usually an affirmation within them. But often it's like an activation from that point. Yeah. Their gift gets activated. Yeah. So, and then we have maybe Tom can talk about what we do to prepare before presbytery, and then what we encourage people to do afterwards. Yep. But that's essentially what a presbytery is. That's great, Tom. Go ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> well, may, maybe if I take a step back and say, um, your the listeners on this podcast or YouTube video. If they if they know about prophetic ministry, mm-hmm. they they have probably a wide array mm-hmm. of experiences. Mm-hmm. Good, from, good and bad. Yeah, everything from what Wayne was describing in a healthy way to the weirdest stuff. Yeah, and then uh, oftentimes people come into the prophetic with a, a an Old Testament view of prophecy. Mm. The, the prophets in the Old Testament were God's mouthpiece to people. And so he, they would expose sin, call out sin, co- call people to repentance. Yep. And, uh, they they lived outside of the community of the, the church. Yep. And they would lob their accusations into the church. <laughs> they weren't well received. And from a pastoral standpoint, uh, I've had a few of those prophets, you know, involved in ministries that I was involved in. And they, they really aren't welcome. Yeah. It's like, no, you, 
uh, you don't have any relationship here and you're coming in and throwing accusations yeah. that are hurtful and and nobody can question you because God said. Yeah. And um, when I first got saved at 16, the church that I got saved in, the pastor was prophetic. Mm -hmm. And the way he would exercise his prophetic gift was uh, he, as he received a person into church membership, mm -hmm. uh, he would, so, so let's say on any given Sunday morning, 15 people are joining the church and he would start, he would shake your hand and he would call your name. So, you know, uh, Tom, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And the Lord was saying to you, mm. and then he would speak prophetically. Mm -hmm. And I never saw it in a sort of an Old Testament model where it was embarrassing, where it was, you know, calling out sin right. issues. It always, as Wayne described, there was always edifying, yeah. exhorting, comforting in, in its words. But I didn't join the church for two years. Because I knew I was going to be the first one that was completely embarrassed. The, <laughs> the, the Lord that, says, Tom, that I saw what you did last night. And <laughs> exactly. You know, and so finally I just decided, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. I mean, I, I, want, I want to hear what God wants to say to me. So the morning I joined, there was about 15 or 20, 20 of us that joined, three or four ahead of me. And he followed the routine, you know, uh, called their name, the Lord bless you and keep you and gave him a word. When he got to me, he shakes my hand. He says, Tom, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you. And he paused. Hmm. And I thought, oh, dear God. Here it going comes. Deep. There's Here something it comes. in there. He's going to, he, uh, you know. And he, he says, the Lord gives me nothing for you, Tom. Wow. And I went, what? <laughs> I've been waiting two years. And I, you know, and I'm not going to get one word. And every person Interesting. In that day received a word except for me. Wow. So that <laughs> afternoon, the, uh, the pastor called me and he said, Tom, I don't know how to explain this. This never happened to me before. Wow. I, don't, I, I don't sense that there, there's any blockage of sin or anything that, like that. And just like that, the Lord said, if you don't want me to speak to you, I won't. Oh, okay. And I, oh, oh, I said, Pastor. Huh. I think I know why the Lord didn't give you anything is because I didn't want to receive a word. Wow. I, I was fearful of what it might be. Wow. And so I wow. And uh and I that that day huh. I changed and said, Lord, I, I'm so sorry. I want to receive your your words. Mm. So just to, you know, to pivot or to you know, add to what Wayne was saying there. Sure. Uh, some people think if you're prophetic that you walk down the street and you go, oh, I know about you, and oh, watch out for you. you know, yeah, yeah. That's, I saw that. And the truth is, if I don't ask the Lord for a word, I don't get it. Hmm. And and if I ask the Lord hmm. that, and he gives me something, I don't always deliver the words that I get. Hmm. Sometimes they're the Lord will show me something about somebody in my church and it's not the right time. And he gives, wow. he shows it to me so I can pray for them or pray about them. Hmm. But when we, when we identify candidates for a presbytery and we, we have prophetic people come in, uh, our, our current, you know, when I first started doing this, we would give the, the presbyters, the candidates name mm -hmm. and that's it. Mm -hmm. Not whether they were on staff or not on staff not what they did in leadership, just their name. Yep. Well, then as the internet, you know, began to develop and you could actually Google somebody's name right. uh, and get information for them, we wanted to be pure. Right. We wanted to be from God. So <clears throat> we, uh, we just uh, give them, uh, you know, we're going to have four sessions, uh, uh, Sunday night, Monday morning, Monday night, Tuesday morning session. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to do three candidates in each session. Yep. And, in the Sunday night, it's going to be two couples and a single female. Yep. You know, Monday morning, it's going to be three couples. Monday night, it's going to be a single male and two couples. That's yep. all we get yep. in advance yep. until the, the day of the meeting. Well, uh, everything is recorded. Mm -hmm. uh, every word that's delivered is recorded. We minister there under the authority of the house and the pastor of the house. Yep. And, and uh, so we give our words. And we don't know, as Wade was saying, 
We deliver them in faith. We don't know. And sometimes I'll speak from a presbyter standpoint. Sometimes the word you, you get a word and, and then the people show up and it's like, I don't think this word fits them. Hmm. And you you want to hmm. you want to change your word because and and what you have to know as a as a presbyter is uh, you can't do this with your eyes. Yeah. If, if you're not willing to be embarrassed, you won't you won't minister hmm. prophetically hmm. because you have to trust that what you're receiving is from God and and let God interpret it to the people. Hmm. And I, I might toss this back to Wayne because we all of us have several examples of this, but I remember one simple word. We were at a presbytery together that Wayne got, and the, the Lord tells him to tell this gal, I love you. So take it from there, Wayne. <laughs> I can see where that's well, going. The word was actually, was actually uh, it's going to be okay mm -hmm. because I love you. And uh, I had no idea, and I felt, Surely there's more than that. Anybody can say that. Mm. But this gal began to to weep, and one of the pastors went and talked to her. Mm. And uh, she had had a, various things going on in her family that was pretty bad. And and just that day, she had decided to kill herself. Wow. And had a plan and had a, you know, uh, had it all worked out where she was going to kill herself. And mm. then uh, she saw a little brochure of this prophetic gathering, and, and mm. she saw my name on it. And and for some reason she thought Wayne Drain seemed a little funny. I don't know why. Maybe because it rhymes. I don't know. But then she said she 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 felt inside. Well, I'm going to go, and if that guy with a funny name wow. will tell me it's going to be okay, I won't kill oh my myself. Oh my gosh! Oh my goodness! So I get there, and the thing is, I, I was flying into Florida and actually got the word in the airplane. Said you're going to see a lady. She's going to be wearing this and sitting over here. And, you just need to tell her it's going to be okay because mm. I love her. So I gave that word, mm. and she didn't kill herself. She She's mm. an active member of the church last time I heard. So here mm. I'm thinking, that's not much of a word, and it, anybody could say <laughs> that, and yeah. wrestling with the Lord over it to the wow. point that I felt him say, well, do you want me to let somebody else do this? And I wow. said, no, I'll do it. I'll do it. Wow. So we, we both had um, situations like that happen so many times. Uh, you know, John Wimber said, sometimes God has to offend your mind to reveal your heart. Mm. And so we've had our minds offended so many times and, and, mm -hmm. and uh, it doesn't make sense. But the prophetic doesn't always make sense. It's not supposed to. Your job, you're like the mailman. You you deliver the mail. That's what you yeah. do. You don't yeah. make it happen. You don't manipulate anything. You just get what you have. Wow. But I wanted to say about uh, 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 we try really hard to pastor presbyteries. Mm -hmm. So like after we have a presbytery, the local pastors will meet with those candidates and they'll go over their words yep. and, and help them sort of discern yep. what hit home and maybe what they should wait on. But we, like I said, to start with, mm -hmm. both of us being pastors, we want this to be a, a great tool, a blessing for the local church. And as a pastor, I can tell you that Sometimes these presbyteries saved me six months of counseling because one word would speak yep. into a deep situation that I couldn't yeah. get to for six months of counseling. So Yeah, so good. We months, we months did months. it. Like I said, we did it at Victory Church. We brought in three, all of our campuses brought in three candidates, as you call them, which what we call, we call them two. Two were on staff. One was just a key volunteer in the church, somebody that we saw as great potential and then, and then you move from that into what we call words in due season, where the presbyters, prophetic presbyters, go out into the crowd and just pick people out. And and there's a real there's a real curiosity amongst the church, um, whether whether they necessarily go to a church that believes in that or not. I think there's a real hunger for more. I think people read about it in the Bible, and they maybe they've never seen it modeled, or when they did see it modeled, it was weird. So Tom mentioned it earlier, but I think. I think that idea of saying, hey, we want to show you how this can be done in a really healthy way. Um, uh, so we want you to come to Presbytery. Maybe you know what it is. Maybe you don't. Maybe you're an atheist. I don't know. But you come, and we were blown away at the people who responded. I mean, our, our churches were packed, every one of them packed. And we were able to show um, prophetic ministry happen in a really healthy way, in a really um, fulfilling way. 
So I, I just, I, I wanted to kind of start with talking about presbytery and we can talk, I want to jump into your book too, but I just think there's listeners that either they're pastors and they themselves are like, man, I need to cultivate this in my church. I need to bring more prophetic ministry into my church. In fact, they cultivated us into starting a prophetic ministry team. So now we're, we have a prayer team, but we were training people in our church that, that believe they have a prophetic gift. So now let's cultivate that in them and train that in them and do what Ephesians 4 says and equip the, the saints for, for the work of the ministry. So, Absolutely. and then there's, there's maybe people that are listening that aren't pastors, but they go to a church and they, they want their church to do this. Well, send this podcast to your pastor, send this podcast to someone on staff because there's really safe ways to go about this. And when we finish the podcast later on, both of you, I want both of you, if you're willing to give a great way to contact you, whether email or whatever that is, uh, if pastors and leaders have more questions or they, they want to do more of this. So let's talk about, let's talk about your book. You guys, well, hold co- on, hold, no, no, hold go on ahead, Tom. Yeah, uh, go let ahead. Me, let me say, uh, one of the, one of the things that we're doing as pastors yeah. is we're trying to model the reality that God speaks. Yeah. And you don't, you don't, you don't have to be a, a, a recognized prophet or a presbyter. You can actually, God will speak to you about your own mm. kids, mm. About, about your own family, about your business. That's good. And, um, and we we're we're modeling something that we really want people to, to grab hold of and then take out, into their into their daily lives. Yes. So, I, you know, even from a prophetic uh, standpoint, I have two daughters. I have, I have four kids, two boys and two girls. Both of my daughters are very prophetic in their own right, and uh, and minister prophetically. And uh, I mean, I've I've been on a plane hmm. uh, in in route to a presbytery. <clears throat> my daughter's a few rows behind me. And my wife is either with me or a few rows ahead of me. And uh, we we land the plane, we're getting off, and my wife and I are standing out there, and my daughter is, is like, what is taking her so long? And, <laughs> and uh, she got a word for a wow. stewardess wow. on the plane, and she it, one of the things we try and model is, you don't wow. have to be worried about this. You don't have to That's change right. the tone of your voice. That's you don't right. have to be all religious. You can just say, hey, um, I... You know, I know you don't know me. Yeah. I really don't know anything about you, but um, I, I really had an impression that I think is from God for you. Would mm. it be okay? Yeah, ask, ask sure. permission. Yeah, yeah, and and never have I had somebody say, "Absolutely no. not, get away from me." <laughs> everybody, everybody wants to be. Yeah, if you got a word from God for me, and if you'll pray for me, yes, yep. the answer is yes. Yep. And and so what. It's not the the presbytery is not an end all to anything. That's good. That's it's, really good. It's an introduction into a life yes. that, that really launched us into the book. You know, the, our first book, he still speaks. Uh, it was really the it, it was both of these books actually have been at Wayne's sort of brainchild, his, his burden. Help! Yeah, I want to do this with you, Tom. Hey, let's mm-hmm. do this together. Well, we were we were talking about what are the things that we've learned about hearing God and how we activate it and how we would share that with other people. Mm-hmm. And, and then, uh, you know, it moves its way through into, and if you want to, if you're a pastor and want to model this, here's how you can model this in your church. Yep. That's so good. And I love what you said about the presbytery because that's, that's what it was for our church. We wanted to cultivate and introduce prophetic ministry into our church. And it really was the catalyst that really, it wasn't the end, it was the beginning. It was the beginning of opening a door um, that really let it begin to cultivate, to become a part of the culture of our church. And so I think that's what it can be. So Wayne, why, why, why God Still Speaks? Tell us about the title. Tell us what prompted you to want to write it and kind of just give us a, a flyover of the book. Well, that's that's sort of been my life message that God God does speak, and yeah. and you know there's large segments of the church say that after the canon of Scripture was completed and after the first apostles died, God didn't speak anymore except through the Bible, mm. and uh, that was not what I saw in the Bible, and it's not was not my experience, and so I felt I felt a mandate as a young man to just carry that banner. Uh, Jesus is alive. 
and he walks with us and talks with us. He mm -hmm. still speaks. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of been a life message. And, and my, uh, my lanes have been the prophetic and worship and songwriting and then the, uh, uh, the pastoral. So uh, that's just something that I've walked with. And, and then it, uh, I started seeing at some, at, one point the lord began to shift me and say i want you to multiply yourself i mm. want you to start raising up others that move in this because when we first started there's just a few there's hardly any women at all mm -hmm. and there's just a few of us that was doing this and uh, it was such a blessing but we just we wanted our sons and our daughters and our friends to come into it so we wrote the book he still speaks mm -hmm. and uh and then I don't know if you want to talk about it now, but the, he still speaks to kids. I do. I want to segue still, right, right into it. Well, he still speaks to kids. Um, uh, in, 19, in 19, I'm sorry, in 2012, mm -hmm. I started a process, a five-year process to turn the church over to someone else. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons I did is because I felt like the Lord spoke to me and said that there was going to be a second Jesus movement. My mm -hmm. church was born in the Jesus movement. I was one of those mm -hmm. Jesus freaks. And so, and I, I heard there's going to be a second Jesus movement. And then as I went along and prayed into that, and, and you hear it everywhere now, but um, I felt like the Lord started showing me that he was going to put kids, middle schoolers, 12-year-olds mm -hmm. out in front of this wow. move of God. Wow. And so, and then Tom and I both have, sons and daughters and we have grandkids now yeah and we felt that one of the things that we wanted to do is to put down on paper mm. uh make the vision plain about it so others can run with it yeah so we we knocked around the idea of how could we make it easy for parents for youth workers for pastors to create environments that their children can actually believe and and experience that mm -hmm. god still speaks he speaks to them He'll speak through them. So that that's sort of where the idea came from. And uh, I was really drawn for a long time to stay in the book of Samuel and look at the process yeah. of how he learned to hear from God. And then yeah. I looked again at when Jesus was 12. He already was full of scripture. Mm. He was confounding the, the physicians and the teachers of the day with what he understood. He was still submitted to his parents. Mm. But he, and I just thought, you know. That's really good. We we usher our kids off somewhere where we can get on with the the, the really good That's stuff. That's right. Yeah, to entertain them. It's so and true, so isn't that, it? So that's our heart. We wanna we want our it to be a normal thing for our mm. kids to say, we need to hear from God. Let's pray and let's listen and see what God might say to us. So I, you, I'll, you know, I'll add to that, Tom. Yeah, you guys can get into some of the how tos on that. But one thing that I'll share real quick is that my. Um, my son, he's about to turn 12, but he, we've always told our kids, pray and listen, the Lord will speak to you. Even when they were very, very young to try to begin to cultivate that, to set an expectation. Yeah, the Lord will speak to you. And it was funny. My wife was reading that story. Um, Eli, Samuel, you know, he kept going into Eli. Yes. What do you need? I'll go back and lay down. I didn't say anything. And finally it hits Eli. Hey, it's the Lord talking to you. Next time you, you hear that, say, speak Lord, you know, I'm, I'm listening. So she had just read that story, and and that very night, Jace came in our room in the middle of the night and and said, Mom, somebody said my name in the middle of the night, just said Jace, and I sat up in bed, and I was like, who was that? And because of what she had just been reading, she just said, hey, go back, and the Lord's talking to you. So if that happens again, and it just opened his eyes, and now he has the faith of a child to be like, yeah, God, God speaks to me all the time. So... There is there is such a key role in the parents cultivating in their children um, that they too can hear the Lord. So I think it's such an important book that you're that that you guys have written. Tom, you want to talk more about it? Yeah, one of the things uh, for as long as I've known Wayne that he one of the ways that he's incorporated prophetic um, ministry into the church is when when they do child dedication, mm -hmm. baby dedication. They the the dedication involves a prophetic word mm. that is given to the parents about this child. Wow! And uh, I was I would hear Wayne talk about, and and I've known this to be true. When when huh. we minister together, Wayne will give them a 
you know, his his prophetic word will be on a tablet and he'll rip off the sheet and hand it to him. And they put it in their Bible. Wow. And if we come back the next year or two years later, they go, uh, oh yeah, I remember I, I got a sheet from you and wow. I've been carrying it in my Bible right here. Or some people say, I've gotten three sheets from you. And they all wow. do this. And so then you have parents who actually frame these prophetic words and put Ooh. them over the bed of their ch- child. Wow. And, and it un- unfolds over the years of their life wh- what's been said by God through the prophets. And um, and so this isn't just a one-off, uh, you know, wow. maybe we ought to focus in now on a second book. Uh, no, we, we've been doing it. Wayne, especially uh, thinking this is life-giving to children and impacts the trajectory of their life. Hmm. And and then my more uh, harder focus is as a parent. <clears throat> hmm. I wanted I wanted to get words for my kids, and I wanted to uh, I, I wanted to model for them words. So I'll I'll give you one word, then maybe Wayne, you could talk about prophetic words for the babies. But uh, my my oldest daughter, when she was uh, her fr- a freshman in college. Um, she was dating a guy that had already graduated from college and she was away at school and we went to visit her and I met this guy she was dating. And instantly I thought, this is not the guy for you. (laughs) You He was a, he was a believer, but this isn't the guy that your mom and I have prayed for all of these years. Mm. Mm. But I knew I couldn't say that to her. Couldn't say that. No. Or she would have married him. <laughs> uh, exactly. I drive her right into it. And yeah. so I, I, it became a burden for me in my praying, in my my prayer time. And so one day I'm praying for, for Lisa, my oldest mm-hmm. daughter. And the Lord said, uh, and I was praying about this guy and the relationship. And Lord, I need you to act. And surely, and, and the Lord just interrupted my thinking. And he mm-hmm. just said to me, uh, tell Lisa if she won't compromise. I'm preparing the husband of her dreams. Wow. And I and instantly I thought, well, I know it's not this guy, and I'll I'll be sure and make sure she knows it's not. <laughs> and no, I can only say what the Lord said. And I really wow. did feel like the Lord said, Don't add to this. I love that. You just tell her what I told you to say. Wow. And so uh, you know, a couple of days later I'm talking to her and I said, Hey, honey, I was I was praying for you. And the Lord gave me a word for you. And she said, really, Dad? Well, I've been, this wasn't a new thing. I've been telling her, I've been praying for you since you were a little girl. I rock yeah. you, you know, when in my shoulder and I'd pray for you and I'd sing songs to you. And so I, she said, really, Dad, what did he say? And I said, he told me to tell you that if you won't compromise, he's preparing the husband of your dreams. Mm. I didn't say anything about the guy that she was with. I didn't mm. say anything about what, what they may or may not be doing uh, or what she was thinking. But I know when you get in college, every young girl in college yeah. is thinking, am I going to get married? And, you know, what yeah. happens if I don't get married? But, you know, and <clears throat> so it was probably wow. a month later, she announces that she and this guy broke up. And, and then for the next three years, <clears throat> periodically, mm. she would say, hey, Dad, remind me of the word that the Lord gave mm. you. And sometimes I would, I'd say, well, this is what the Lord said. Mm. Uh, if you won't compromise, he's preparing the husband of your dreams. I know that there's a guy that is perfectly God built for you, honey. Yeah. And I would encourage you with that. Sometimes yeah. I'd actually take her to my journal and I'd say, here's the day. Wow. Here's, here's what I wrote when I was praying That's for powerful. you. And, uh, and so. Um, That's really powerful. The finish of that is one day I'm in church. Uh, the she's home. She's a senior in college. Mm-hmm. She's home, and the bunch of the college kids would come over to our house. And I'm an early to bed guy, and so you know, about nine thirty or so, I'm going, "Hey guys, glad you're here. See ya." Well, my mm-hmm. wife is the party animal, and so she's <laughs> going to stay up and play all the games and do all the stuff with them. And and so she did that. And the next morning, Sunday morning, I'm on the platform at church. And Lisa walks in with a guy that had been at the party. Mm-hmm. And as they walk down the aisle, the Lord says to me, mm. this is the guy I've been preparing for your daughter. 
Wow. Well, instantly, I look up, I see if he's, I want to know if he's carrying a Bible. I watch him and see, see if he's raising his hands in worship. I want to know about this guy before I mm-hmm. meet this guy. Because even though he'd been a part of our church, I'd never met him. Yeah. And, um, and, and so then after church that morning, I tell my wife when we're alone, I said, honey, the Lord spoke to me today. You know, that guy that Lisa was with, and she said, yeah. And I said, I, the Lord said, that's the guy he's been preparing for Lisa. And she mm-hmm. looks at me and she says, no way. And I said, yes, way. She said, no way. And I said, what do you mean? No way. And she said, I was matched up with him in a, in a card game uh, last night. And I looked over at him and the Lord said, this is Lisa's husband. I mm. went, what? What did wow. you tell me? She wow. said, I forgot. I said, you forgot. Oh, <laughs> That's my kind goodness. of a big one. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> it, you know, as a parent, mm. yeah, God's speaking to you about That's your good. kids, about circumstances that, are, that they're dealing with right now. That's so good. At, at every age is absolutely critical. That's so good. And Wayne, Wayne, I want to... I really want you to unpack that because when when Tom is describing the baby baptism thing and and prophesying over these children, I, my my mind was exploding with why are we not doing this? Because you know we're always about you know giving our giving the kids in the church donuts or whatever else. But you talk about you, even even just with assimilation, even with keeping families in the church, even with serving. Uh, the congregants in our church, you talk about a connecting point that if you can prophesy over someone's kids, they will stay with your church because you're speaking into their family. You're speaking into their kid's future, which is one of their, probably their biggest priority in life. So how do you do this? I'm, I'm intrigued because I'm going to steal it. I'm, we're going to do this. Uh, <laughs> so, so how do you do this? In both of our books, uh, we do a chapter on dedicating children and as far as the mechanics of it. Uh, and, and I think people can do it differently. But yeah. for me, uh, if a parent says we want to dedicate our child, and sometimes they're infants, sometimes mm-hmm. they ha- they're they two years old but have never sure. been dedicated. And so they'll send me a picture with the baby's mm. uh, name on it. And I'll just put that up on my desk. And through the week, I'll pray. And they'll find wow. a date that they can invite all their relatives in. And yep. it becomes almost evangelistic because sometimes they'll bring 40 people, oh, yeah. family members. And so then we get up and we... and you know, we, we, we mentioned Hannah dedicating Samuel. We mentioned yep. Jesus being dedicated. And in both instances, there were prophetic words. Wow. During that. so That's we, we so true. It was biblical. Mm. And then, and then uh, I'll say, well, you know, uh, as I was considering little mm. Johnny before the Lord, I felt the Lord speak to me about him. And so I always, for that, I usually type it up because they like to mm. put it in frames and all That's that so stuff. Good. So, and, and I'll just read it to them. And then I'll, I'll tell the congregation, you know, I'll say, uh, these are people in our community, and we all want to dedicate ourselves to helping them wow. raise their children in the fear of the Lord. And so it's a real connecting point for parents. Mm. And then some of those, I've been doing it long enough now, like 30, 40 years, that kids have come back and said, you know, when you saw me in that white uniform mm. going into a hospital, I'm a wow. doctor. I just wanted to call and let you know that wow. that word was on my wall when I was growing up, and my wow. mother always reminded me that there was going that oh I was going goodness. to be involved in healing. So, so Gosh. I feel now pastors get under pressure because they may not be prophetic. Sure, but if you sure. have have a team given permission, that's right. You given permission for a prophetic team that you trust because mm. you're trusting them with your most precious thing, those yep. babies. Yep. So you trust them, then you'll say. You talk to the parents. We want to have a moment where we just seek the Lord for your child and see if God might give us a prophetic Mm. word. That's so good. And like Tom said, we've never been turned down. In fact, people come from California and have their babies dedicated. Absolutely. And and, uh, the logistics of it are in both of our books that you can look at. But I I think it's one of the greatest pastoral tools that I I use. I'm so inspired by that. And, you know, we're cultivating that ministry in our church. And I think that's such a key part. And I, and really, you know, we'll kind of wrap it up with this, but I, I, I just wanted people to hear the impact that prophetic ministry can have in our churches. And it's something that we have, I don't know that we've intentionally 
Maybe some have intentionally cut it out. I don't know that it's been as much intentional as just a shift in the focus of church. And I think there's so much ministry to be had um, yeah. in the prophetic ministry in our churches that are going undone or unnoticed. Um, and I hope you've heard some examples today to our listeners of this. And so just a couple of uh, really quick parting things. I want each of you to kind of, you can kind of give just a final thought. Um, our listeners are a lot of leaders, um, a lot of pastors, but a lot of lay people as well. So maybe they're hesitant to prophetic ministry, or maybe I, I want to leave it open to whatever you guys sense that you may just want to say something in, in parting. And so both of you go, and as part of what you say, go ahead and tell people that the best way to get a hold of you, um, and it doesn't have to be your, you don't have to give out your cell phone number, but is it the follow you on social media? Is it email me here or go to my church's website, whatever, whatever way you want to do that. So Wayne, you want to go first or vice versa, whichever. Yes. Uh, you can contact me at waynedrain.com. Okay. That's probably the easiest way to remember. And, and, and I'll, I'll get all that. And I'm on social media. You can find all that from there. Okay. Uh, I guess I'd just like to say that uh, there's nothing more precious in a Christian's life than hearing from the Lord. Mm. And there's so much confusion. People think only the professionals can hear or only these special people can hear. But Jesus expects everyone to hear. He said in John 10, my sheep will hear my voice. Mm. So the only legitimate reason that someone can't hear from God is if they're not a sheep. Mm. So mm. if you're a believer, then God, Jesus himself expects you to hear his voice. Mm. And But unfortunately, people have been taught that only special only people on special days can hear. That's good. So Tom and I have been on a quest all these years to just tell people simply, hey, he not only God not only still speaks, but he'll speak to you that's if so you'll good. listen. That's so, so good. That's, that's, that's been our and focus. I'm even reminded of, of Paul. You know, he's given a list of all the gifts and we should pursue all the gifts. But he said, and especially <laughs> prophecy. So he wouldn't tell us to pursue the gift of prophecy if it's not something that we could all hear the Lord. We could all hear that the Lord's still speaking. So that's so good, Wayne. Tom, how about you, my friend? Yeah, I can be contacted at TomLaneBooks.com. Okay. Uh, that It'll get copies of both of our, our books. Uh, yeah. my, my direct email address is Tom.Lane at GatewayStaff.com. So yeah. if they want to drop me an email, they can do that. Uh, okay. And I was thinking of this, uh, one, one of the things you were saying is it's sort of a, a parting thought. You mentioned a couple of times, John, that you're, you're activating prophetic ministry in your church. You're doing training. And, mm -hmm. and I, I wanted to underscore that we do not just release people willy-nilly into the prophetic. No, no. Um, it, you know, uh, we are very intentional. We have a, in all of our churches, we have a, um, a training uh, and equipping track for prophetic ministry that qualifies them. We activate them and we give them rails. You know, when yep. you do prophetic ministry, you learn there are certain things that you, you venture into in a prophetic way cautiously. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, you're not going to walk up to a lady and says, the Lord says you'll have yeah. a baby. You know, yeah. this time next year, you better be pretty. You better be in that word. You <laughs> I know, guarantee you. Uh, and and then if the word is somewhat corrective, mm -hmm. you know, you you don't point a finger and and give it a, in a mean spirited way because yeah. we believe that it's delivered. You know, comforting, exhorting, yeah. building up. So it might be, you know. You might say something like, "Hey, I feel like the Lord said He misses you." Yeah, yeah. You no, know, He, the the Lord yeah. is is wooing you back into His presence. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what mm -hmm. happened to you, but uh, when you were uh, when you were younger, something mm -hmm. happened that really took you off track of what God wants mm -hmm. in your life. And He's yeah. He's He's wants to tell you today, He loves you. He's yeah. missed you. Come back to me. Mm, yep. You know, it's corrective, but it's with in a, in a measurable amount of love. Yeah. In a, in a parental loving yep. way, yep. not That's in right. a, you know, jamming it down your yep. throat. So uh, That's right. uh, training people in it is so important. 
And as yeah. Wayne had previously said, this isn't just for a few. This yeah. is for everybody, but we need to help prepare them, develop them yeah. into the yeah. process. And the ones you don't want in this ministry are the ones that aren't submitted and aren't correctable. And, yeah. you know, yeah. they want to do their own thing. Well, That's you're right. not going to do your own thing under our ministry. So That's right. One That's of, really one good. One of the phrases we use sometimes is that real, honest, genuine prophetic ministry will not call people out. It'll call mm. people up. That's a great mm. way. It's, all, it's always really about good. calling people up to a destiny rather that's than really shoving good. them down to this talk about the sin that they already know they have. Yeah, that's really so. good. That's a great way to put it. Well, both of you, thank you so much for taking the time to, to be on the podcast, but beyond that, thank you for doing what you do. Thank you for doing the ministry that you have done and, and the faithfulness of 40 plus years of ministry from both of you. I mean, combined, you probably got a hundred years of ministry experience between the two of you. So I hope that doesn't make you feel old. It's, it makes you really wise is what it does, guys. Thank you, John. But no, thank you for your ministry. Thank you for what you've done for the body of Christ. And I can't imagine how many people have been blessed because of your ministry. And so thank you for modeling it so well for my generation and for generations to come. Uh, we appreciate you so much. Our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for having us. For those of you watching, uh, listening, thank you again for joining the podcast. Again, don't hesitate to give us a like. Go to our website, churchintention.com. Until the next episode, we love you. Keep doing the calling that God has before you, and we will see you next time.